and make one or two very, very swift comments. One very, very swift, one or two very swift statements. The first thing, I actually want to address myself to Dr. David Samadhi because I've been involved in bringing the truth of the IDF to overseas campuses and overseas communities since 2007. And I know that careers in the media and careers in the public can unfortunately be cut and duly short if one overtly identifies with the State of Israel. You, Dr. David Samadhi, have not only expressed your, I would almost say, unconditional support for the State of Israel, but you have traveled to the State of Israel, you have operated in the State of Israel, and you have broadcast on the humanity of the State of Israel, not merely within the Jewish community, but through every means, method, channel possible, including on Fox News as part of the Fox News Medical Aid Team. And there are many people who ask me, what can we do here in the diaspora? Are we really making a difference here in the diaspora when it comes to the security of the State of Israel? You, sir, are the epitome, the embodiment of an individual who carries upon his shoulders a willingness to support and to represent and to raise his head high in solidarity with the State of Israel. And I and everyone in this room applauds you for doing so. Thank you very much. Before I go any further, I just want to express my sincere thanks because here in this room there are a number, a number of veterans of the Israel Defense Forces, people who have served, people who took the baton and ensured that I had a place to which I could move following my graduation from university. Thank you to every single member of the Israel Defense Forces here in this room. Uh, we deeply appreciate your service. It would not be appropriate for me to close the proceedings without expressing to you precisely what these two individuals in front of us are doing here. They're not actually here for the purposes of this gathering here tonight. This gathering here tonight is what's called a chupar. It's a gift, it's a present, it's an addition to their purpose here. As you may well know and understand, these individuals are not lacking for work back home. Uh, Dan Goldfuss, a colonel, in a classified unit in the Northern Command, has plenty with which he can be getting on with, but he's here. And Colonel Dr. Tarif Bada, the Deputy Surgeon General of the Israel Defense Forces, also has plenty with which he can be busying himself, but he's here. And the question is why? And the answer is very, very straightforward. They are here because they understand that the way that the university campuses go will be the way that the politicians and the policymakers of the United States go. They are not here to address themselves to audiences in the Jewish community, but rather they are here to address themselves to university campuses throughout the United States of America in order to bring the proud truth of the Israel Defense Forces to all who will listen. In his time with us, Colonel Dr. Tarif Bada has addressed himself to university audiences in the state of Massachusetts, North Carolina, in Washington, D.C., in New York. And among the audiences to which he spoke, he actually provided a briefing to the chief of medicine and the chief of surgery at the Hospital for Veterans Affairs in Washington, D.C., they sat there in a packed auditorium learning from him on the treatment of post-traumatic stress disorder and the opportunities to curb the phenomenon of suicide among returning veterans from the battlefield. He did so under the auspices of nobody less than the Under Secretary of Health for the Veterans Affairs. And so he is here not speaking merely to friends, and I'm assuming I'm among friends, but also to many, many individuals who are seeking Israel's academic leadership, but also, sadly, 
individuals on college campuses who speak ill of the State of Israel. You should know that at precisely the time that Colonel Dr. Bada was establishing the field hospital for the treatment of refugees, students on university campuses were expressing that he was doing so in order to harvest the organs of, refuge, of, of innocent people killed in the battlefield. That, my friends, is a blood libel. That is a blood libel existent today, and it's that blood libel that serves as the motor and the power behind Israel Apartheid Week, which as we speak is raging across college campuses here in the United States of America. So not only have these individuals given of their lives, but these individuals are now here to throw themselves into the line of fire in order to defend the good name of the State of Israel, and we thank them so very much for doing so. It's okay. I also want to make special mention of Colonel Dan Goldfuss. There's a misperception in the public domain that suggests that members of the military are mere pawns in the game played and chaired and presided over by politicians. Nothing could be further from the truth. When it comes to international relations between the State of Israel and the United States of America, a relationship that is of deep importance for both countries, there was a time when President George W. Bush, a great friend of the State of Israel, was convinced by the idea that Yasser Arafat was a partner for peace and was moving to implement a process, the fruits of which would be a lasting peace between Palestinian Arabs and the State of Israel. At precisely that time, and some of you will remember this, the Israel Defense Forces Navy commandos intercepted a ship called the Karin A. The Karin A was bringing to the ports with Gaza munitions, weapons, rockets that were designated for a singular purpose to kill innocent citizens of the State of Israel. Beyond our borders, on our seas, the Karine was interdicted. And a search ensued on that Karine, which demonstrated the smuggling of these rockets and these mortars. As a consequence of the interdiction of that ship and it, the report of its interdiction, George W. Bush, to whom the message was conveyed, realized and recognized with finality that Yasser Arafat was no partner for peace. The individual, the commanding officer responsible for the interdiction of the Karine sits before you and it's Colonel Dan Goldfuss.